this uh, lecture, I will show you new technique because we know that on B mode, we have uh, sometimes low specificity and we would really make biopsy for malignant lesions. So we want to improve our positive pretty value of malignancy. And I will show you uh, uh, three new technique, um, breast elastography, it's not a really new technique, but I will show you what is new uh, with uh, in Canon, the super microvascular imaging. And uh, I will show you the first ex preliminary experience of a fused uh, ultrasonography and MRI uh, for breast imaging. So very quickly, because I, I think most of you know uh, the principle of elastography, you know that there is two types of elastography. The strain elastography is consisted in manual compression and the evaluation of tissue deformability. Uh, there is some classification to evaluate qualitatively uh, the deformability. And the other type of elastography is shear wave elastography, which evaluates the speed of movement of the waves, the elasticity. And the main advantage of this uh, uh, shear wave elastography is to uh, reclassify complex cysts because uh, we sometimes it's difficult on B mode to be sure the lesion is a cyst. And typically on shear waves, there's uh, nothing inside the lesion that suggests the uh, fluid content of the lesion. So we know that we can characterize the fluid, but also and mainly we will characterize the solid. And uh, the solid, we have uh, also classification. And uh, you know, you must be careful because uh, the color map are not always <laughs> correlated between strain and shear waves. And uh, de de depending on the type of the morphology on elastography, you will have uh, uh, lesions that can be classified from benign uh, to malignant uh, for characterizing solid lesion. So uh, here, an example of strain elastography. I will show you only one example because in our practice, finally, we use not so much this technique because the main limit of this technique is uh, lack of reproducibility. We, uh, here you have an example of quantitative analysis, and we know that the malignancy is suggested when the ratio is higher than four, when you compare the elastic the deformability between the lesion and the adjacent normal uh, uh, parenchyma, like in this example. The second type of elastography is a shear wave. You have two types of analysis. The first type is a descriptive analysis, and you will be able to see the propagation of waves in the tissue, like in this example. You can see that in this cancer, there is a deformation of the wave. You have that. And in a benign lesion, you will have no deformation of the wave. So it's very basic, <laughs> but it's the first approach, uh, which is a qualitative approach, and which can be the first step when you perform shear wave analysis. So here, an example of a lesion that is detected in the external quadrant of the left breast. Uh, it's a speculate lesion, correspondent morphology on a suspicious lesion on B mode. And you can see the result of the description descriptive analysis on shear wave with a deformation, typical deformation of the wave with a typical uh, here a stiffness which is high, higher around the lesion and sometimes you can have nothing inside but it's typically suspicious with this high, um, uh, high presence of stiffness around the lesion. So it's, I think it's interesting to also use quantitative analysis for elastography uh, because sometimes you can have some artifact uh, on the um, description of waves and it probably it's more strong for the analysis of shear waves. So in this example, the, the patients uh, have a, a mass here. Uh, you have the, uh, the, the view of the mass in the orthogonal plane. And if we look at the elastography, uh, there is a modification of the stiffness uh, with ratio which are between four and two. And it's important to make several region of interest because sometimes a lesion is heterogeneous and you need several region of interest and this lesion was a papilloma. So if we look at the different shear wave techniques in the literature, uh, in this paper, they compare two different systems. 
And you can see that the performance is quite similar between the two systems. And uh, you have an evaluation of the uh, Emacs, which is, uh, uh, and the Emin. Probably the Emin is stronger than the Emacs because it's less, it's more reproducible. And you can see that malignant are around 50 uh, kPa uh, versus benign, which are around uh, 20 kPa. So here, uh, an example, a 73-year-old woman referred for breast screening. Uh, on the right breast, there is an irregular mass at the union of the uproquadrant on the right breast. This lesion was an invasive lobular carcinoma, and you can see that the value of the stasis is very, very high, 164 in this example, with all sign of malignancy, uh, whatever the image you can see on elastography. So when we look at the big publication and the evidence-based medicine for elastography, this meta-analysis, I think, is quite interesting. It's on a method, according from the methodology show that there is some heterogeneity, and we know that between the study, uh, we have not a very good coefficient, the CADAS coefficient, which is quite high, but I think it's interesting to see that elastography uh, mustn't be used only, you must be used in combination with BMOD because you can see that using only Elastiscore, you miss some cancer with a sensitivity with only on 80%, uh, but with, you have a good specificity. And in BMOD, it's exactly the opposite. So the best way, finally, to analyze your lesion is a conjunctive um, combination of elasticity score and BMOD to have the best positive likelihood ratio of malignancy, which is clearly better when you combine the BMOD with the elasticity score. What are the limits of the breast elastography? The main limit is also, even in shear wave, the problem of the enter and try observer reproducibility, which is low to moderate. And there is some artifact here. I take two times the image with different compression, even on shear waves. You can see that you can completely modify. If you just look at the uh, coefficient here, it's uh, 94 in the same lesion, it's 47. That's why it's very important to make a ratio, because if you make a ratio, even if you made a strong compression, even if you don't want, the, the ratio uh, allow you to be more reproducible be between the evaluation. But even if you use a ratio, we know that there is some false negative, and these false negative have, are the lesion which are low-grade lesion with DCIS and also deep lesion. And here, this, in this example, no problem on BMOD. This lesion is uh, an hypoechoic lesion with ALO, so the classification using the BMOD is typically suspicious. But when you apply the uh, elastography, you can see that the coefficient is quite low, and probably it's because it's near, it's a very deep lesion, and we know that there is some false negative in this type of lesion. So the second technique I will discuss with you uh, is the super microvascular imaging, uh, which is a new algorithm uh, to detect microvascular movement with an eye image frame. Uh, you will have a simultaneous detection of arterial and venous vessels. There's no movement artifacts. It's the same spatial resolution than 2D imaging. And you will be able to detect distal perfusion, and you don't need any specific settings. So it's very easy to use. So there is a publication in the literature made uh, last year who describe uh, the feature you can use to characterize the lesions. Um, the malignant features are a number of vessels higher than six when the vessels are branched, and when the location of the vessel are both central and peripheric. And when we look at this monocentric study, there is an inclusion of 191 lesions, 99 benign and 92 malignant lesions, and they uh, create a score based on these three criteria. You have benign lesion when there's zero vessels, or when the vessels are dotted vessels, and when the distribution is peripheral or central, and malignant when you have more than six vessels, branch with shunt and penetrating le lesion, and the location of in the periphery and the center of the lesion. And you can see that 
the performance is good and it's better when you add BMOD with SMI in comparison with BMOD with color, typical color Doppler or and BMOD alone. So it's a preliminary work because you have a high prevalence of malignancy in comparison in, with in your clinical practice. So that must be confirmed, but I think it's a, it's a good first step uh, for this new technique. So here an example. Uh, this uh, lesion was uh, uh, regular nodules, which can look like fibroadenoma. When you look at the elastography, the elastography was not so um, uh, was not so uh, difficult. Yes, no deformability, important deformity of the waves. And when we look at the SMI, you can see that you have a lot, a lot of microvessel uh, everywhere with some branch microvessels. And this lesion was not. Uh, fibroadenoma, but was an IDC grade 3. Here another example, you have a lesion which can be a complexist or a solid lesion. The elastography is, is reassuring, it's no problem, the very, there is no deformability, there's no flow on SMI. This lesion was a complexist. Here another example, it's a lesion we detect on MRI. Uh, it's a lesion with a bright signal on T2, so probably a lesion uh, that is uh, quite soft. And uh, when we look at the uh, elastography, here you have the elastography. Finally, an elastography, it was, there was a modification with a, a lesion which is quite stiff. With a SMI, uh, you can see that is, there is some peripheral and branch vessel in the lesion, so potentially uh, suspicious. And this lesion was a ADC, uh, SBR2 cancer. Another example also, which is an interesting uh, example, because I think it's important to have good settings. In this patient, we stop this lesion on the prospective management of this patient, and this lesion stay um, well visible and suspicious on breast tomosynthesis and on synthetic mammo. So we perform at the beginning ultrasonography and can see that at ultrasonography, it was a little bit suspicious, but not so much. There was no thing on SMI, but you can see that the image is not good because uh, you can see that you have half of the image which is in the, <laughs> in the, in the chest, so it's really not good. At the follow-up, the patient, there was an increasing of the patient, of the lesion, and this lesion was finally a breast cancer. So be careful when you apply all this new technique, the basic things is to have an optimized settings for the BMOD and for all this new technique. Here's some example. It's a patient who was referred for nipple discharge. You have uh, here a beautiful cyst with a papillary projection. Uh, you will know that uh, with this type of lesion, elastography is not so good. And we perform SMI, and it's very beautiful because we can have uh, the flow inside. There's not so much flow in this lesion. So the first hypothesis was a papillary carcinoma, but we perform a biopsy, and uh, finally this lesion was a benign papilloma. Here, another example of nipple discharge on the right breast. If you look at the mammo, there is a mass in the retroareolar areola part of the uh, right breast. Uh, if we look at the tomo, this lesion uh, is uh, well seen on the tomo, and we have this uh, lesion on uh, the BMOD with some flow at the periphery of the lesion. And uh, we perform ult um, um, uh, MRI in this patient, so they confirm the lesion on the right side, but say, this, this MRI also allowed to detect another lesion on the left side. And uh, this lesion was uh, um, classified uh, by RADS4 because there was, uh, there was the morphology was not so much suspicious, but we have a curve that with uh, early and strong enhancement and a little washout. When we look at the Doppler, there was, no, there was a, a flow, but we don't know if this flow was really uh, present or no. But when we apply the SMI, no problems. It's sure the lesion is there. And I think it's useful to target your lesion and when you perform your second look at trastonography to be sure you will uh, keep this uh, papillary lesion. 
And now Zhang Paul, 62-year-old woman with personal history of bilateral breast cancer, treated by conservative surgery, and there is an impression since two years of retraction of the left nipple, no problem, clinically there's a problem. Uh, this uh, retraction is due to this uh, very suspicious mass, which is speculated, and uh, we uh, have uh, um, the problem of is there an uh, evasion of the areola? areola? Probably yes. Here, the lesion, when you, uh, when you analyze, elastography is very suspicious. That's true that in this type of lesion, speculate lesion, you can have finally a negative SMI, but the combination between elastography and SMI help you to detect everything because finally the stiff lesion which can be speculate like luminal A breast cancer have uh, usually um, are malignant on elastography and probably more less vascular as you using SMI but the lesions that are false negative on elastography especially the lesions that are triple negative will have high vascularization so you can combining both technique have a de decrease your number of false negative in this uh, patient, uh, when we apply SMI, it helps you to detect a uh, little flow between the mass and the nipple, and this patient has a complete invasion of the nipple. For the characterization of axillary lymph node, SMI could, you could, always, could also be useful because in a normal adenopathy, you will have a tree which is completely homogeneous tree. You have that on Doppler, but I think it's better visible on SMI. You are totally able to see the vessels are everywhere in the lymph node. And uh, what is in interesting is this patient is an example. You have a right uh, cancer, breast cancer, no problem with that. And we find an uh, adenopathy. And when we look at that, you can see that there is some vessel except in this part of the lymph node. And so we focus our function on this part on the lymph node and find um, little metastasis. So it could be useful also to target the good part of the lymph node and to take the, the, the part which is invaded um, in, during your, uh, your function or biopsy. So the last part is about fusion. So it's a preliminary experience. And we think this technique could be useful when you perform your second look ultrasonography because you have to detect septal lesions. And even if the correlation is not so easy because when you perform an MRI, the patient is in prone position. And when you perform ultrasonography, the patient is in supine position. Usually when you perform your second look, you use many uh, lesions that are around the lesion you are looking for poor f to, to, to be sure the lesion is at the good place. And you will see that when you use fusion, um, it's helpful because you are more confident in the location of the abnormality you detect. So here, the first clinical case, it's a 73-year-old woman uh, who referred for MRI for, pre, um, um, for ex uh, staging of a lobular, invasive lobular carcinoma on the right breast, so no problem with this lesion. And when we perform the MRI, you can see that we have an additional lesion, uh, which is uh, um, uh, 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 different than the, the index lesion. When, uh, and you have an also another lesion on the opposite um, breast, so that means you will need to, to, to search this lesion using ultrasonography. Here you have the, um, the picture of the two lesions on the right breast and uh, the lesion on the left breast. How do you do? Uh, it's quite easy because when you perform MRI, you use 3D sequence and uh, you will import the uh, T1 weighted native sequence because it's useful to have also uh, the normal uh, breast parenchyma around. You will position your probe and you will do the synchronization with the position of the nipple. And so here you have the lesion there. So it's just to show you here the lesion. Okay, and so you have the lesions there. So when you move your probe, you move also uh, the MR sequence. So we will begin in that case. We have uh, an index lesion and we will search the, uh, the, uh, the second one. So we are on the index lesion and we go down, 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 and we will find here we are, the lesion is there and you can see that you have the lesion there. So it's not completely uh, similar, but you are sure it's there because you begin at the lesion index and you, you go down. And so when you find the lesion, you are sure 
that correspond to the lesion and MRI. And so um, here in another video, it's the same. And we perform the, the, the biopsy under uh, fusion. We can perform with fusion or not. And the lesion, no problem, uh, is there and correspond to the lesion there. So I think usually when you perform second look, you are not always sure it's a good lesion, but Using the fusion, you are more confident. It's our feeling uh, with this, uh, with this uh, new technique. On the left breast, you remember, there was a detection of uh, a uh, mass in the opposite breast, and this is the context of lobular carcinoma. We must be very careful with this type of lesion. And also, here is the fusion. Um, you have the lesion there, and you also, in here, you have the, you, that correspond, I think there's another video, yeah, here that correspond to this lesion. We are in the right place because we are on the, on the medial uh, part of the breast, on not on the anterior zone, we are on the medial zone, like that. We have the fatty uh, part of the breast here that correspond to this portion in MRI, and the lesion is uh, at the uh, superficial part of the medial zone of the breast, so it's probably the good lesion. Here, another example, uh, this patient was a 55-year-old patient with left nipple discharge, and when we performed the MRI, we have a, a mass, uh, which is quite regular, which enhances according to time intensity of type 2, uh, but we have, uh, using the abbreviated protocol, uh, earlier, uh, early enhancement, so uh, with the context of nipple discharge, we need to find this lesion and to biopsy this lesion, and typically it's not so easy to biopsy this type of lesion under MRI because it's quite superficial, and technically sometimes it's difficult, so it's easier to find using ultrasonography here, the B mode. When we perform the fusion, the lesion is there. There was another lesion here, but we are looking at this lesion because this, this lesion was spontaneously bright on T1 before injection. And when we look at that, we have the nipple there, and on the very superficial part, we'll find the lesion that corresponds to this lesion here and here. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is the last slide. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Ay, ay, Okay, it's, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a little big. Uh, Perhaps I can do that. No, no. Okay, it's, it was the last example I have to show on the fusion, so I think it's, it's over. So what I want to um, give the, the message, I think this new technique um, needs to be uh, used with the BMOD in combination with the BMOD. And if the BMOD is suspicious, you need to perform a biopsy. But I think for lesions that are it's like look like BNAG on BMOD, you can combine the elastography and SMI, and I think it's a combination of both techniques that help you to not miss any cancer, because sometimes you can have cancer, ex especially in young women, BRCA mutation, can you look like adenofibroma, because it, but it's very triple negative lesion. These lesions are soft and elastography, so you can miss it. The elastography will not help you, but SMI can help you to recognize uh, this cancer. And in the opposite, sometimes in lesions that are subtle distortion, elastography will be good, and SMI less good, because I low vascularization, and in that case, the combination of both helps you to have to, to optimize your specificity in all lesions. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.